Hello, it's Scott Manley here with part two of my introduction to career mode for our Kerbal Space Program. Okay, so now what are we going to do? Well, the next thing I would suggest we do is we go back to the contracts. And he says, let's try to escape the atmosphere. Okay, well, we can do that. So accept that mission. It also says try and orbit Kerbin. That might be a little harder, so let's close this down. Now, I'm not going to immediately try and or try and uh, get out of the atmosphere because I want to show you some other stuff about the game first. So let's go back in here. We're going to build a slightly more complicated rocket. So this is the basic rocket we've got. We're going to add some features to it. First of all, we're going to get rid of that RT-5 flea. We're going to try flying with liquid fuel engines. So this is the FLT-100 fuel tank. We're going to put a couple of these on it. This provides liquid fuel. The liquid fuel can be used to feed liquid engines. So the LVT-30 Reliant liquid fuel engine. So we pick that up, stick it on the bottom, and that will take fuel from above and turn it into thrust. Again, you need to fix your staging down here. That's good. Now, on the science front, there's a few other bits and pieces we've added. These are experiments, and this is a transmitter. So we should really be doing as many experiments as possible. If you were power playing this game, you would have done these Mystery Goo experiments right at the start. But I'm going to do them now. So we put that in there. This is the, the Science Junior. This is a very large experiment, which provides quite a lot of science, actually. But it's you know rather large and inconvenient. We also have the Mystery Goo Containment Unit, which is some bizarre item that lets you do I don't know, lets you look at a goo and it tells you about science. That's great. Finally, let's stick some communitrons on the side. Uh, and I realise that I haven't even mentioned symmetry. Oh dear, let's redo this. So normally. Normally, these things, these attach to the side, you see? You can't stick them on the front. You can try sitting them on the front, but you put them on the side. Now, one of the things with putting them on the side is that as the rocket's flying, it's going to have a little more drag on this side because the air will be hitting it. It'll also have a little more mass, and the whole spacecraft will tend to just kind of go oh, like that and then crash into the ground. So you don't want to have that. What you want to do is balance the whole thing. So you want to pick up the item, and set symmetry. Now you can click on this down here. You can make as much symmetry as you like. You can go from, well, you can do one, two, three, four, uh, six, or eight. And we are only going to do two just right now. So there's two different Mystery Goo experiments. And you just put one on. Similarly, I'm going to put on two antennas just because it looks interesting. Okay. So we're ready to go, and the next thing you can do is, is look up here, you can click on the crew, and you could select a different crew member just to give them some experience. So this guy, Jebediah, has had a little bit of experience. Let's try giving Valentina some experience. So I click on her, I can drag her into the relevant slot, and now we're ready to go, so let's launch. So this mission is all about collecting science. So the first thing we should do is perform this mystery goo experiment on the launch pad. I could have done this last mission, but I'm doing it here just to show how it's done. The goo doesn't seem to be doing much right now, and I get three sides for that. Let's keep that. That's excellent. Okay, now Valentina Kerman is ready to go, and I'm going to adjust the throttle in this engine. So this is a liquid fuel engine. It is much more controllable. Using the left uh, shift and control keys, you can adjust the thrust up and down. You can also press Z to go to 100%, or Z if you're British, or X to go to 0% thrust. I'm going to use the shift key from here just to bring it up to about one third, mostly because it means I will fly for a little longer. The other thing I'm going to do is once we're flying, I'm going to try controlling it with the W, A, S, and D keys. However, I'm also going to enable stability, right? This is where it starts to get complicated. Valentina Kerman is a pilot. 
So she can enable stability control, and that's the T key. We get this little uh, light coming on, and that means that if we are spinning out of control, she will try to bring the thing back under control. So other than that, we're ready to go, and we're going to try and collect science while we're in the air. And I'm going to try and land in this water over here so we can collect new scientific data. So are we ready? Uh, we're going to press space, and we're starting to move upwards. Now I'm going to press the D key just to move over a bit. And I don't want to move over too much, but I want to maybe bring this down to like a 30, 40 degree angle. Look at that. See? Just bring it over. Keep it turning extra carefully. Now while we're flying, let's collect some crew information. Crew report. We got a crew report while flying over the shores. We now have this transmit option. Now transmit takes power. Oh, oh. Let's throw it. Oh, X. We lost a little control here, but that's fine. I'm going to transmit this. And you see that that is using electric charge. See that? And we still have a little bit of fuel here, so we should probably use that up. What's happened is because this thing is front heavy, it wants to flip around. So let's turn this back the way we're going and then fire the engine just a little more. The reason I'm firing the engine is because that's now generating more electrical charge. The engines actually generate electrical charge. So also while flying, let's observe the material bay. There, the engine now burned out. The less resilient samples appear to have splattered around the interior, forming new and interesting colour combinations. We should also use the mystery goo while flying. And that comes up and it says, the goo jiggles and wobbles as the craft flies. So we're going to keep that. So we've got science in both of these goo pods. We have science in this. And we had science in here, but we transmitted it away. So we actually have room again to perform another crew report. And we've actually gone from being over the launch site to being over the ocean. So if I do a crew report here, the crew report is now while flying over Kerbin's water. So that's more science. I'm going to keep this around. And now that we're getting kind of low, below about three kilometers, it's a good time to open the parachute and slow down a touch. So hopefully this will deposit us gently into the ocean here. So again, I'm going to use time acceleration. Time acceleration is also bound to the greater than and less than keys, or the, the full stop and the comma keys, depending upon how you're thinking about things. So this is us coming down at about 8 meters per second. It might be a little too hard for this engine and it might break, but as long as the rest of the ship survives, I will be happy. So no shadow in the water this time. There! Oh yes, we smashed everything, but our experiments are still there. And uh, that's pretty good. That is actually pretty good. So, what I was saying about the science is, the science comes from different locations. So this one, if you review the data, it came from the launch pad. So that's one thing. Whereas science, which has come from flying at Kerbin, is different. And in fact, you can notice that we get more science while flying as opposed to sitting at the launch pad. If you get to the moon, the amount of science you're going to get for this experiment is even more. Uh, now, if I review the data here, we have our crew report while flying over Kerbin's water. Well, now we're in the water. Can we get a science report here? Well, uh, if we close, if we keep this, keep, keep, keep. Uh, if I try to do a crew report, it will say overwrite the existing crew report. And I'm going to say cancel. What? There's one kind of weird niggle with the science system, and that is you can only have one piece of science in any instrument. So after this thing is used, the information in it is bound to one particular location. And the only way to put new information in it is to reset it. Well, the same is true of the crew pod. But astronauts are able to take the science out of these gizmos and then store it in the pod. So what we're going to do is go on EVA. So Valentina is now there. She's sitting outside the spacecraft. And for example, we can right click on this and collect the data. She's going to remove it there. And now there's no data in there, right? 
what we can also do is we can collect data from this. Removing the goo from the experiment will render this module oper un inoperable. Great, so we've got that. So now she has the data on her. And I guess if I get close enough to this one, I could grab the data from that. This all doesn't make any sense to do this here because we're going to recover the entire vessel, but this is going to matter when you're in space. So she can store those experiments in the pod. But equally, she can just grab, take the data from the pod, which includes the crew report, and now store that back in the pod. This is where it gets really weird. So if I board by pressing the B key, I can now do a crew report again. And it doesn't complain. It says I get a crew report from Kerbin's Water. I get two science from that, so let's keep that. But actually, there's more. I can go back on EVA and uh, Valentina can actually do crew reports while she's outside the spacecraft. It's called an EVA report, extra vehicular activity. Now, funny little glitch is that because she's technically not touching this model, the game thinks that she is flying. So she actually gets points for flying over Kerbal's, Kerbin's water, 5.6. That's great, and of course she can store that experiment in there. And the other thing, well, if you press space, this will let go of the ladder, and she'll stand on top of this. Well, now she's technically standing here, so she's standing in Kerbin's water, <laughs> and she gets more data there. So let's try and get back into the pod. The hard part here may be that we can't get back into the pod. I can jump up and try getting in. You, the movement is all controlled by, uh, you know, Q A Q W A S D and all that. So she can swim around there, show herself off, and uh, space lets you jump. So you can try jumping back onto this. It may help or not. And you might have some trouble because she's not inside this now. She is considered a separate vessel. Uh, okay. Yes, this isn't going to work. I'm going to have to jump, jump over this. Oh, there, she's falling down. I had it for a second. But look, this is what I've done. I've maximized the amount of science by doing several different science reports. So I can recover her. And the recovery gives us, like, the three science that she collected while it's in the water. And uh, she comes back, so we get she gets experience. And... All the way over there is the untitled spacecraft, so technically I could click on that and that would give me the option of flying it or recovering it. However, I'm going to actually suggest that you go to this building here. This is the tracking station. The tracking station lets you see the whole world and you can in fact scroll all the way out using the mouse wheel and see the entire Kerbal system with all the planets, with the planet Elu right at the very edge and the planet Moho right in the middle. And this is Kerbin, which has a moon here and a moon slightly further out called Minmus. But from here I can go in, and there we go, there is the spacecraft slash down. So I can click on it and click recover. So we will get the science that's inside that. And now we're up to 52 science, that is an amazing amount of science that will really get us going places. Actually, hopefully it will get us going to space. So we got some money back for recovering that, even though we destroyed the engine. Now I think it's time to go to space. But that will be in part three. Until then, I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.